With a constant stream of new GPU models flooding the market, it can be difficult to know which one to pick. And with NVIDIA's next-gen 40 series lineup now virtually complete, an AMD 7000 lineup nicely bolstered with new mid-range GPUs, I figured now was a better time than ever to look at the cards you should buy, those you should consider, and those, frankly, you should avoid. With my key recommendations for a range of budgets and resolutions. Let's do this. I'm going to split this video down into five main sections. First, I'm going to talk about the state of the GPU market, what all the different naming schemes mean, and help you guys understand it all that bit better. I'm then going to run through my favourite budget, mid-range and high-end cards, starting with the cheapest and working through to the most expensive, before rounding things off with my key takeaways. Use the timestamps on your screen to navigate to your desired section, or stick with me the whole way through. Now the GPU market is a confusing one, but one that's actually not too difficult to understand. You've got two main players, AMD, often referred to as Team Red, and NVIDIA, who are often referred to as Team Green. Intel, rather confusingly, have also joined the GPU race and are looking to be a promising contender for years to come. So watch this space. NVIDIA's 40 series lineup ranges from the cheapest RTX 4060 with a $299 MSRP to their top-end RTX 4090, a card that retails for well over $1,000. Latest pricing and availability for loads of retailers and regions will be linked in the description. On the AMD side of things, you've got the 7 thousand series lineup is their latest. The lowest end card is the RX 7600, while the highest end card is the 7900 XTX. The higher the number, the higher end the card. Sometimes brands will put letters after the names as well, such as the 4070 Ti, it's basically a 4070 with a bit more juice and go power. Same with AMD, the 7900 XTX has a bit more go power than the standard 7900 XT. On the whole, the more digits, the better. It's also worth noting that AMD's last generation 6000 lineup and NVIDIA's last gen 30 series lineup, which follow the same rough naming schemes, are also worth considering. AMD's 6000 lineup in particular has some amazing deals, and we'll come on and include those a little bit later in all of the detailed graphs. There's a few key features and metrics to look for when it comes to buying a GPU, aside from, of course, its price. VRAM is one of the biggest ones. The amount of video memory you have is going to hugely impact upon the gaming performance that your system is able to achieve, or as it happens, not achieve. We'd recommend cards with 10 gigabytes or more of video memory as a general rule. Budget gamers will have to suffice with 8 gigabytes of VRAM on cards that cost $300 or less, but we'll come on to that in more detail later. While for 1440p gaming you want preferably 12 gigs or even more, while 4K gamers will want 16, 20 gigabytes or potentially even higher to crank all those visual fidelity settings and textures right up. Buying a last generation GPU can be particularly compelling because you often are able to achieve more VRAM for less money. On the whole, we tend to say that a new GPU replaces the GPU from the lower tier from the last generation. I'll give you an example. The RX 7600 in theory should provide you with the same kind of performance as the RX 6700 from last generation, the card theoretically just above it. That isn't always the case, as you'll see in our performance graphs, and it doesn't always work like that. But if you're buying a last gen card, you'll want to notch one up in the line up to achieve the same kind of performance as a next-gen design. So that's enough of the background, let's talk about some blooming GPUs shall we, and start off by recommending the best cards for those on a budget. As far as budget GPUs go, there are a few options I would consider to be budget cards. These include NVIDIA's RTX 3050, 3060, 3060 Ti, and RTX 4060. Well on the AMD side, you've got the RX 7600 from the current generation, and the 6600 and 6650 XT from the last generation. Buying a budget GPU is particularly difficult because both brands seem to not quite be delivering what gamers are expecting at this price point, namely cheaping out on the amounts of VRAM on their cards in aid of trying to sell the higher end models. And that makes picking up a last gen card here actually a much more sensible shout. On the very budget end, you want to look towards something like an RX 6600 non-XT. This will provide a solid, if a little bare bones experience at 1080p, but is for those of you who are really tight on the budget and don't want their overall system to exceed 6 to 7 700 US dollars. There are various options available from brands like Gigabyte, MSI, Asus, but go with whichever is cheapest, as at this price point, that's what matters the most, rather than the 3% more performance the Gigabyte card might theoretically offer than a cheaper Asus example, to cite just one plausible scenario. The RX 6650 XT is also a decent shout, but its 8 gigabytes of video memory does leave it a little constrained, while the RX 7600, while solid on straight rasterization, really struggles with its 8 gigabytes of allotted VRAM. This is a card that could have been amazing if it had 10 gigs, but it's too constrained, especially when you venture into 1440p with its VRAM allocation. Nevertheless, 
next, as you can see, the 7600 sits really well in some of our graphs. And you can see why we like this card, but put a bit of a disclaimer that it's only really good for 1080p. 1440p gaming now, and especially into the future, is more of a challenge. Art cards are also worth considering at this price point, but be specific in your research when you look at what games you want to play. Intel's driver optimizations are really, really improving, but they're not there yet. And that means you'll want to make sure if you consider an art card, it can definitely run your favorite title at the resolution and frame rate and visual settings that you desire. But definitely look at something like the ARC A750 or A770 for a solid VRAM budget option. My favorite GPU at this price point though, if you're able to spend that little bit more, in the region of upper 200, lower $300, is the RX 6750 XT. With 12 gigabytes of VRAM, it's really well future-proofed in terms of playing 1440p into the future and even 1080p for years to come. It's got bags of straight rasterization performance and there are some great deals on this card right now. As retailers like Newegg in the US look to shift these cards and make way for, of course, the next gen options. The VRAM is what really wins with the 6750 XT, and it's a card that has matured well since its release a couple of years ago. Personally, I would discount the 4060 and 4060 Ti, both the 8 and 16 gig models. These are cards Nvidia just got so wrong, as you'll see in some of our reviews, that they aren't worth recommending. The 7600, for example, beats out the 4060 Ti for less money and still has the same VRAM constraint. If I'm not really going to recommend this with too much excitement, I'm certainly not going to recommend the Nvidia counterparts. But let's move up the range. What if you've got a bit more money to spend? You want a game at 1080p ultra all the time irrespective of the title and you want to do 1440p high that's where you look at those mid-range cards between 300 and 500 us dollars now the mid-range is another area that's kind of difficult on the nvidia side the 4060 ti comes in at between 399 and 499 with the rtx 4070 clocking in at 599 in terms of its usd msrp as I say, prices do change a lot. Check out the links below for super up-to-date information. AMD, on the other hand, do have a bit more to offer in this sphere. In fact, they've got quite a lot to offer. The new RX 7700 XT and 7800 XT retail for 449 and 499 US dollars respectively. Both are pretty good cards and both have gone down fairly well at launch. But they also have last generation's 6800 range, which as you can see from some of our graphs, do still punch above their weight and are often available for some really competitive prices. Often in the region of what the new 77 and 7800 XT have been released for. I'm a firm believer though that the 7700 and 7800 are the answer for mid-range gamers moving forward. And if AMD's pricing strategy on their last gen range is anything to go by, these cards will be sitting at or below MSRP in no time. In fact, in the days following the launch, they were still available for competitive prices, meaning the pricing and availability is only going to get better. The 7700 XT comes in with 12 gigabytes of video memory, fine for 1440p, not out adequate for 4K, while the 7800 XT comes with 16 gigabytes of video memory. Great for 1440p and better for 4K, but it's not a 4K graphics card. AMD are not targeting the 77 and 7800 series at 4K gamers, and that's totally fine. Obviously, double check that the 6800 isn't a better deal than these cards at the time that you buy, and always look at graphs like these and performance benchmarks to figure that out. But if you're shopping at the mid-range, consider the 77 and 7800 XT. If there remains only a $50 price difference between the cheaper and higher end of these two cards, go for the 7800. The extra $50 in our testing is well worth it. But if this price difference increases and say the 7700 goes to sub $400 at $399, that could make it an incredibly compelling option that obviously saves you $100. But that hasn't happened yet and we don't quite know what the situation is going to be with demand as we head towards Christmas and the PC building mega season, as I call it. Both good cards though, both worth considering. On the Nvidia side, you're going to have to spend a bit more. The RTX 4070 wasn't a terrible GPU when Nvidia launched it, but the problem is it gets beaten out by sometimes the 7700 and always the 7800 XT. Cards that at the moment cost 100 US dollars less. They can unfortunately, this sad Asus Dual 4070, which is actually a decent card with 12 gigs of VRAM, DLSS3, Nvidia's great ray tracing, kind of not really worthwhile in my opinion, giving AMD the lead on the mid-range once again. I'm going to split the high end of this video into two. It doesn't seem right to go from spending $500 to then talking about cards that could cost upwards of $1,000 or even $2,000 at times. So let's look at how things
things work when we move up the range. The RTX 4070 Ti clocks in presently at 799 US dollars. That's an area where AMD haven't got loads. Their 7900 XT is probably the nearest bet, but it's going to cost you marginally more, at least at the time of filming. The 4070 Ti was meant to originally be the lower VRAM variant of the 4080, which actually makes it a pretty strong card and out of Nvidia's lineup, probably one of the better GPUs. Is it worth spending the extra money on a Radeon 7900 XT? I would say it is, and I would say definitely consider that card over the 4070 Ti. But if 4070s continue to come down just a little bit in price, you might find if you're looking to spend $700-ish that the 4070 Ti is the way to go. Even if it's a card that I don't absolutely love. Move up the lineup and you want to spend a little bit more but less than a thousand dollars and again Nvidia just haven't got anything right now that fills that gap. Looking on Newegg right now and the cheapest 4080 which is a really actually very good card is over a thousand dollars, a thousand and ninety nine to be precise. Meaning the difference between this and AMD's 7900 XTX which is plainly a better GPU is staggering. That makes my recommendation once again at this price point lean towards AMD. The 7900 XT and 7900 XTX are both solid GPUs and will deliver you next gen performance. If you're looking to shop at this 4K sort of realm on a budget, consider something like the 6950 XT as well, as it gives you bags of VRAM, great rasterization performance, but is of course on the last gen with worse power efficiency and probably, you know, it's a little bit long in the tooth by comparison. I like the 7900 XT and XTX, particularly the XTX card, as it gives you a bit more room. But unfortunately for AMD, it's currently the best they can offer. Which makes my recommendation of the very, very best GPU in terms of raw power that you can buy right now stick as the 4090, the card I've recommended time and time again for those who want the best of the best when it comes to high-end gaming performance. NVIDIA's RTX 4090 is just a monster. With 24 gigabytes of video memory, GDDR6X as well, it's incredible. And if you're looking to game at 4K in every title with everything set to max, apart from maybe Cyberpunk and Starfield, the 4090 is the one for you. For content creators looking to maximize their performance in streaming, editing, and rendering scenarios, it also makes the most sense with dual AV1 encoders that push it heads and shoulders above the rest. So where does that leave us? If I had to give you guys five recommendations for five key budgets in under 50 seconds, let's go with that as the theme, here's what I'd recommend. Super, super budget, you've got not a lot of money, RK750 or RX6600. Just check with the ARC that it really works well in the game you want to use. You want to spend a bit more money? Jump up to the 6750 XT for its bags of VRAM and awesome straight rasterization performance. AMD, I love this card. Failing that, the 7600 is worth considering, but certainly not my favorite GPU. Looking to spend a little bit more money, and I'd recommend the 7800 XT in the current market. If the 7700 XT came down another $50 in price, I would definitely consider you look at that card. Spend a bit more and the 4070 Ti does make Makes sense until you get into the territory of AMD 7900 XT and XTX. The XTX is my favorite pick if you've got the money, but the XT is still a superior option for a bit more than a 4070 Ti. Got money to burn? Buy the 4090. There really isn't that much more to it. If you enjoyed this video, found it useful, found it helpful, hopefully a bit entertaining, drop a like rating, get subscribed, comment, you are awesome and I love your videos and I'm gonna go and buy myself a new graphics card. Yeah. And as always, um, hopefully see you next time. If not, Thanks for stopping by. Adios.